After the Germans failed to capture Paris, their advance stalled, and the opposing armies began engaging in trench warfare. What is trench warfare? What was it like? The German advance halted in September of 1914. As the two armies slugged it out along the Marne River, both sides attempted to outflank the enemy. When these efforts failed, the opposing forces dug in and fortified their positions. By the following spring, an intricate system of parallel trenches had been dug. These fortifications stretch from Belgium's northern coast, across France, to the Swiss Alps in the southeast. While trenches were not new to warfare, advancements in weapons technologies, coupled with a lack of change in military tactics, made them an essential part of World War I. The earliest trenches, built in France, were quite simple. They were shallow, and frontline soldiers were packed in, shoulder to shoulder, to thwart enemy advances. These men suffered enormous casualties from artillery and rifle fire. Over time, the trenches became deeper and more elaborate. Engineers constructed zigzagging networks of interlocking defensive positions protected by concrete, steel, and loops of barbed wire. Such positions could withstand intense bombardments and proved impenetrable against most infantry assaults. The underground headquarters of officers often had flooring, furniture, telephones, and even pictures on the walls. But the living conditions of the common soldiers were miserable. Troops could be left at the front for weeks without relief and they were often subjected to round-the-clock artillery bombardments. When it rained, the trenches flooded, and soldiers bogged down in the mud and filth. This constant exposure to wetness led to trench foot. Trench foot is a condition where dead tissue spreads across a soldier's feet and often leads to amputation. Crowded, Rat-infested trenches were breeding grounds for diseases. Cholera, dysentery, and typhoid fever spread through the ranks. Trench fever, a disease transmitted by the feces of body lice, was responsible for one-fifth of all British military hospital admissions in 1917. While diseases killed many soldiers in World War I, the conflict was the first prolonged engagement in history in which weapons and fighting killed more soldiers than illnesses. Trenches provided some protection from gunfire and artillery, but when an army attempted to assault an enemy position, the results were catastrophic. The area between the two armies was known as No Man's Land. This was a barren landscape marked with shell pox, obstacles, and coils of looped barbed wire. When soldiers climbed out of their trenches, they were met by waves of machine gun fire. Not surprisingly, such attacks led to massive casualties. During the Battle of the Somme in 1916, the British Army lost 60,000 men in the first day of fighting. Such slaughter meant that generals could rarely afford to go on the offensive. As a result, soldiers spent most of their time enduring bombardments in the trenches. The prolonged shelling had terrifying psychological consequences. Nervous and mental breakdowns were common. Some men were rendered entirely immobile, unable to carry out instinctive tasks such as running away or fighting back. At the time, medical professionals referred to the condition as shell shock and battle hypnosis. Today, it is known as post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. In 